Allison McKay invites you to take a journey to the meeting places of Baroque art and music. The double bass player for Toffel Music, Toronto's acclaimed Baroque Orchestra, is the creator of House of Dreams, the multimedia program which uses exquisite musicianship, gorgeous projected images, and inviting narration, guides audiences through five European homes in which masterworks by Baroque artists would be found. Previews writer Jennifer Pensick speaks with McKay about her inspiration for House of Dreams and what concert attendees can expect from the program featuring music by Bach, Handel, and Vivaldi. McKay explains the relationship between visual art and music. She also talks about new ways of connecting today's theatergoers with artists from long ago. What inspired you to create the House of Dreams program? I had created programs for the orchestra in the past that had a um, a narration or an, an actor to set the music in some kind of historical or global context. And with uh, what we called our Galileo Project, which was celebration of the uh, 400th anniversary of Galileo's first use of the telescope, for the first time we'd had a theatrical set and a lighting design and a, a stage direction. And the audience response to that project and also the the excitement that it caused among the musicians, uh, part of it was that we memorized the whole program in, in order to um, make the visual elements a little bit more exciting. And I thought after that that it would be amazing to do a project with similar elements about Baroque painting. At first I've, I thought, oh, well, maybe we would concentrate it on one painter or we would be in a certain museum and that would be the drift of the narrative. And then as I kept reading and just finding certain connections, it developed into its present form, which is kind of a virtual trip to five private houses in Europe, one in London, one in Venice, one in Paris, one in Leipzig, and one in the Dutch city of Delft, where uh, there were important private collections of paintings, and uh, there were also known to be performances of really wonderful music. What do you see as the connection between art and music? Yeah, I guess the relationship is on several levels, and in one way, um, it's a kind of aesthetic connection where it's amazing to think of a composer coming from the same world as a contemporary painter and the other thing is to try uh, to experiment with something which is really difficult at the moment but to imagine what it would have been like to be a kind of ordinary person or an, an arts lover at the time to enrich the experience of listening to broke music by imagining um, seeing uh, paintings at the at the same time. Well, for people that, you know, are planning to go but perhaps aren't entirely familiar with what they're actually going to be seeing in yes. here, can you describe a little bit, of, you know, because it's not your usual concert in a way. It's 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 a lot of visual and, you know, listening. Yes. So, um, it, it, it in a way, it's still very much a concert. It's, uh, you know, a concert length, and we we, um, we do um, uh, wonderful music by, um, by Handel, by Vivaldi, uh, Purcell, by Marin Barre, the great French viola de gamba player, um, by Bach, and, um, and, and by Telemann. But each house is connected um, with pretty much with one painter that was originally featured in the house. And for instance, in the in the case of Handel, um, and in many cases we we don't know the exact uh, uh, paintings that that were in the house. We we can take a good guess at what they might have been like. In some cases, we have the exact estate inventory or the wills of people, and we know the exact paintings that were there. I should say that each of the five houses still exists in, in one way or another. Two are, are kind of house museums. One is an arts... Uh, the, the Consul Smith House in Venice is now uh, the offices of an arts foundation that does um, kind of cutting-edge exhibits in the, in the Venice Biennale. Uh, one is the Palais Royal in Paris, and one is a, a pancake restaurant in, <laughs> in Delft. Be, because they all exist, we were able just over, you know, a, a year or two to um, set the project up 
up as an international collaboration with the organizations that now run each of the houses. And we were invited in each case to go and visit and, um, you know, take musicians if we would like and to, to do photographs of the, of, of the rooms. And, uh, of course, all of the paintings are now in museums. They're not in the houses anymore. But, um, because we have wonderful high resolution, um, images of, of the paintings and photographs of the rooms, we were able to put the paintings and the rooms back together to kind of recreate that experience. So the paintings that we've chosen in Handel's house are, are two beautiful scenes by Watteau of uh, featuring dancers from the, the world of opera and dance that uh, and we know that Handel had two of these theater pieces in his house and we have a wonderful account uh, from the diary of, of Mrs. Delaney who was a neighbor and great friend of Handel's that she had attended uh, rehearsal the first read through of his opera Alcina and Alcina featured a very famous dancer from Marie Salé from the Paris Opera. So um, there are a lot of these um, little connections. If you can imagine being Handel's neighbor, it was quite common for neighbors and friends to be invited to um, opera rehearsals before the, the, the opera moved into the into the theater for, for big rehearsals. And so you can imagine sitting in Handel's living uh, music room, which is really fairly small, and looking at these watteaus of French dancers and hearing Handel um, direct probably from the harpsichord, uh, you know, the tempo and the phrasing that he would want for the, the dance music that this very f- famous dance um, dancer from Paris would actually be dancing. So there are a lot of levels of, of connection, although I think that the emotional impact of, of the basic combination of Handel and, and the pictures and the narration is, is very, very direct and accessible to the, <laughs> to the audience. Previously, you mentioned how um, the musicians will be performing their program from memory, and yes. that, that itself also adds a very important visual. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of that? Yeah, well, it's interesting because uh, you, with these projects, you know, they've they've taken us um, very far afield now in our touring life, and they they've become, you know, very important in in many ways. But I, in a way, I think the most important thing to the artistic life of the orchestra has has been has been memorizing the music and as you can imagine the idea of doing it was met with very varying reactions from the orchestra because it just takes hours and hours and hours of extra work. It's just a kind of labor of love. And um, uh, there, in, in the first time we did it, some people were very gung-ho. And, um, and of course, some people find it much easier to memorize than than others. Some people are incredible sight readers. and um, But everybody, in the end, put their minds to it. And when it came to doing the second program of the House of Dreams, um, everybody wanted to, to do it. It was, it was very moving, actually, that... Uh, Everyone was on on board right away. And it's allowed us, in a way, to redefine our relationship with the audience because uh, we go out into the hall and and play. Uh, Each time we go to a different hall, we see how features of the hall, whether they're balconies or aisles, um, whether they might be used um, to advantage in certain pieces uh, where we go out to play, because, of course, we're unencumbered by <laughs> by having to, to... I mean, we only do that occasionally in the course of the program, but the audience experiences this wonderful surround sound or being able to be right next to um, Jean Lamont, our music director, or, or to a noble, and, um, you know, at first people find that rather startling, but it is a very exciting thing for us to uh, to be really up close with the audience. Tickets are on sale for Toffel Music Baroque Orchestra's House of Dreams, April 16th, 2013 at Schwab Auditorium. Order online at www.cpa.psu.edu or by phone at 1-800-ARTS-TIX.